I've gotten to sit in over a thousand different office chairs, and just like you, I like comfortable chairs. So I put together a list of the most comfortable chairs I've used at every major price point. Starting with $300 or less, the most comfortable chair I've found is the Tacova Meshback Chair. As of the time of making this video, it is currently listed for $299 on Amazon, but is often sold for much less than that, sometimes even as low as $150. Let's start with the seat. It has a good amount of padding, and I find it to be pretty comfortable. It isn't high-end foam, but there's enough of it to make it comfortable for several hours at a time. Overall, this is one of the best seats I've used for under $300. The same goes for the backrest. It offers a little flexibility, and I find the lumbar support to be helpful without feeling like it's just in the way and poking you. I also really like the headrest on this chair. I'm not a huge fan of headrests in general, but I like this one. The padding feels good to lean into, and it's adjustable enough to fit right where you need it. The recline is something I always look for when considering how comfortable a chair is because I need to know what it feels like when I'm kicked back and relaxing. The Tacova does a good job here. The recline range is really deep and it feels smooth. This is the factor that pushes the Tacova in front of the Katina Millette for me, which is often my other go-to pick for under $300. The recline feels much better to use than the Millette, and the final factor that I really consider when looking for a comfy chair is the armrests. The Tacova has three-way armrest adjustment, which is quite good for a chair at this price point. The pads are nothing to write home about, but they aren't hard plastic or some weird shape. The Tacova is only $300, so you have some downsides like a one-year warranty, but I think it's about as good as you're going to get for under that price point. My pick for under $500 is the OMS with Synchro Tilt Mechanism. This is currently priced at $479 and is similar to the Tacova in terms of style and functionality, but just an upgrade in basically every way. It has a very similar tilt motion, the range is large, and the synchro tilt action is great for relaxing, but the mechanism is just a step up in quality compared to the Tacova, which is reflected by the 12 year warranty that you get with the Yes chair. The arms are also more comfortable due to the additional padding that they have, and for an extra cost, you can upgrade to a highly adjustable arm package, giving you four or five way adjustability. The mesh backrest is height adjustable, really ensuring that you get it placed to support your back properly. It doesn't come standard with a headrest, but you can add one which will push the price just over the $500 mark. I do like the headrest though. It has a good amount of padding and is adjustable enough to use in multiple different scenarios. The seat is probably going to be the main attraction with the Yes. Not many chairs have thick padding anymore, and the Yes is one of them. Not only is the padding thick, but it's soft. Some chairs make it seem like they'll be cush, but then the foam is just really dense, so the seat feels firm anyway. The Yes has a thick, soft seat that you really sink into. I don't mind the contour that it has because of the softness, but for those of you that do not like a contour, you'll probably want to avoid this pick. The pick for under $700 was really tough for me. I went back and forth with the Hayworth Soji and Eurotech Vera, eventually landing on the Soji, but this is still a toss up for me even as I make this video. Both of them have really solid comfortable seats, more on the firm side, but the Vera seat is a little softer than the Soji's, and for this reason I find it to be a little more comfortable, but I still really like the Soji's seat. Both have four-way adjustable arms, but the ranges on the Sojis are noticeably larger, and this makes a big difference for me personally, just because I can't use the Vera's arms at my desk setup the way that I like to use it. I have to work around the arms, whereas the Sojis arms are adjustable enough to work with my setup, so they are much more comfortable in that respect. I also think that you're getting more comfortable arm pads on the Soji. They're a little softer, and they don't have the rounded edges that make your arms slide off the sides a little bit, which I do experience when using the Vera. I think both chairs offer great back support, with the Soji getting a little edge here with the lumbar support option, but for me that's not a huge deal just because I prefer chairs with a little less lumbar, so the Vera is still very comfortable for me. I do like the recline a bit better on the Soji though, they both have a synchro tilt action, but I find the Soji to be smoother, so it just feels a bit better to use. Both of these chairs are a huge step up from the Tacova, and I also think that they're a good step up from the OMS as well.
Once you hit the $1,000 mark, you start to see high-end, flagship-level products from some of the leading manufacturers. This is another price range where I struggled and went back and forth between two chairs, the Hayworth Zodi and Steelcase Amiya. I decided on the Zodi, but this is another scenario where I think both could be amazing options. Hayworth recently redesigned the Zodi. The previous version is now called the Zodi Classic, and I've had a chance to test the new Zodi for weeks, and I really like it. To keep it under $1,000, you just need to go without the dual tilt mode, which I don't think is necessary to get the most comfort out of the chair. In my opinion, this is the best quality chair currently available for under $1,000. The chair feels high-end, and it's backed by a good warranty from Hayworth. The seat is on the firm side, but I find it to be very similar to the Fern, which is my current daily driver. This is one area where I do think it falls short of the EMEA though. The EMEA has an equally as supportive seat, but it's softer, so I find it to be a bit more comfortable. The back on the Zodi is super comfortable though. The mesh is soft, the backrest has good flexibility for moving and stretching, and the independent lumbar support adjustment is also something that is very unique to this chair, especially for under $1,000. The arms are also great. They have massive four-way adjustment ranges with soft arm caps. This is another area where I do think the EMEA has the advantage though. The arms are more adjustable due to the articulating motion and the arm caps are softer. The recline is much better on the Zodi though in my opinion and the main reason why I would go with the Zodi over the EMEA. The EMEA has more of a static recline, whereas the Zodi has more of a rocking motion, which I find to be much better for relaxing and hanging out. It is one of my favorite things about the Zodi. The Steelcase Leap would be my pick for the best option under $1,500. This is one of my go-to chairs and is the chair I've used the most over the last three years. This chair has a great build quality, holds up really well, and comes with one of the best warranties in the business. While it isn't one of the most eye-catching chairs in the price range, it is definitely one of the most comfortable. The seat has great height and depth range, and I love how flexible it is. The seat pad is on the thin side, but I like it and I find it to be supportive and comfortable. The arms are the best in the business. You get four-way adjustment with massive ranges, and then you get really soft, comfy arm pads. The arms are probably my favorite thing about the Leap. The backrest is also really nice though. The thin plastic design and live back technology make it super flexible. It comes with a two-way adjustable lumbar option, which really allows you to fit into the curve of your back, and you can also control how much support it is providing. I will say that the lumbar is still pretty strong, even on the lowest setting. I took it out of my Leap chair, and I actually really like it that way. The one thing I wish was different on the Leap is the recline. It's really great for tasking, but not so great for rocking. The range is really good, but I like the motion a bit better on chairs like the Embody or the Fern. And don't get the headrest on the Leap. It's expensive, and I think it's really uncomfortable. It has a tiny amount of padding, pushes your head forward, and only has height adjustment. But even with these downsides, I still consider the Leap to be one of my top three chairs of all time. With an unlimited budget, my pick for the most comfortable chair would be the Hayworth Fern. It's my current daily driver. I have been using the Gaming Embody a lot lately too, and it is the other chair I was considering for this price range. I just like the Fern a bit better still. The specific configuration I would choose is no lumbar addition, no headrest addition, and add the digital knit upholstery for the back. The reason for no headrest and no lumbar is that I don't think they're very comfortable. The headrest only has height adjustment and it isn't easy to use. It's also super hard, so it's just uncomfortable to rest your head against. The lumbar is too pronounced for me, but the system is cool. It's like an airbag and has a height adjustment option. It isn't pokey or hard, it just sticks out further than I would like. I find the rest of the chair to be really nice, especially the digital knit upgrade because it gives the backrest a little extra bit of softness. The backrest has a high back design, giving me support all the way up through my shoulders and neck area. The four layer backrest design makes it feel like you're floating and the amount of flexibility it offers is pretty wild. The seat is also really nice. It's definitely on the firm side, especially when it's brand new, but it does soften up a bit and I find it to be really comfortable now. The arms are also great. They're just as adjustable as the Steelcase Leap arms. They have a little bit of squish to them, not like the Leap, but they are still very comfortable. 
The recline is also going to be one of my favorite features. It has a nice, deep synchro tilt action. It's smooth to use and offers a really large range. The Fern's recline is great for both upright tasking and just kicking back to relax. I find this chair to be the best fit for both working and relaxing, and that's why it would be my number one pick for my most comfortable chair.